Alright, so it's not for the assignment, your grading is the average of the Um, as far as uh your fifth week grades, yes, I'll be looking at least um chapter seven. Um, and of course, um, you know, when tenth tenth week grading, I would expect everybody to be at, to have been settled, and uh, look, we'll look for you know way more than that. But just because of the dynamics of what's going on, chapter seven and its test is what I'll be looking at this evening. Yep. All right, so 10.2 is properties of linear functions. And this is where we'll start today with your intercepts. So for your x-intercept, the x-intercept is where the x crosses the intercept, um, the x, the, your graph crosses or intercepts the x-axis. And then your y-intercept is where the graph crosses or intercepts the y-axis. So all x-intercepts have the characteristic that y is always equal to zero. All x-intercepts, all y-intercepts have the characteristic that all x part of your component will be equal to zero. So if you're trying to find your x-intercept, let y be equal to zero. If you're trying to find your y-intercept, let x be equal to zero. That will always be the case. I always remember if I scroll up too fast, let me know so I can come back down because I cannot see if you're finishing that. All right, so we want to graph using our intercepts, or we just want to find our intercepts. Uh, it doesn't matter which intercept you find first. Here we have 2x plus 3y equal to 12. Uh, so I always decided to find my x-intercept first. If that's the case, you let y be equal to 0. Remember the characteristic of all your x-intercepts is that y is equal to 0. So plug in 0 for y. 3 times 0 is 0, so that would be 2x equal to 12, divide by 12, I mean, excuse me, divide by 2, and x is equal to 6. So the ordered pair here is 6, 0. Remember your x is always first, then y, and your ordered pair. If I want to find my y-intercept, I let x be equal to 0. Characteristic of all y-intercepts is that x is equal to 0. Plug in 0 for x. 2 times 0 is 0. That leaves you with 3y equal to 12. Divide by 3. And y is equal to 4. Order pair here would be 0. 
four. Questions. Then you can go ahead and graph six zero. You go to the right six. No F Y is right here, and then go back to your uh, origin zero four. You would not move right or left, but go up four, and that would be that point right there. All right. Questions before I go to the next example. All right, so after a parachute is deployed, a function that models the height of the parachutists above the ground is f of t is equal to negative 10t plus 2800, where f of t in feet of the parachutists t seconds after the parachute is deployed. Find the intercepts and then explain what they mean in context. All right, give you a chance to finish copying and then we'll look at it.
All right, so we want to find the intercepts. One thing that might be good for you to establish is what the variables mean for you. T represents seconds. And then your F is your feet. So, you know, normally we have X and Y. This time we have F and T. Um, guess we can go ahead and let's do it like this. F of T represent feet. And like I said, this would be your Y. This would be considered your X. If we go off of our regular use of uh, variables. So the first thing we can do is let T be equal to zero. So you plug it in. So before we interpret that, questions. Run with your intercepts. You let one be equal to zero, find the other one. Then you let the other one be uh, equal to zero, and then find what's left, solve for what's left. So in this case, we're letting t be equal to zero. And remember, if you go back to what the problem says, t represents. Uh, T seconds after the parachute is deployed. So right when the parachute is deployed is uh, zero seconds. In other words, no time has passed. So at So at uh, t equals zero seconds, the parachute is 2,800 feet in the air. In other words, no time has passed from the time that he or she has opened up his or her parachute. Once the person opens up their parachute, then the seconds start ticking and the height begins to decline. All right. The other one, want to let f of t be equal to zero. So we're looking at zero is equal to negative 10 t. It's 2,800. You can subtract. 2800 from both sides. Then divide by negative 10. T is equal to 28, I said 28, 280. And don't forget your T is in seconds, 280 seconds. All right, so don't forget F of T. Your Y in this case represents uh, feet. 
you know, feet above the ground. So at a uh, F of T equals zero feet, that means the pair of shooters has touched the ground. So let's see. So at uh, f of t equals zero, it, that means it took uh, the parachute is 280 seconds to touch ground. All right, questions on your intercepts, how they can be used. Once again, you're going to let one be equal to zero, solve for the other one. Then let the one you solve for be equal to zero and solve for what's left. All right, so let's look at our slopes. Let's see, I think you guys can use it to graph. Yep. All right, so your slope is going to be represented by M. And that's going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Or you can do y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. You just have to remember to stay consistent. If you're going to use y1 first, then you have to use x1 first down bottom. Or if you use y2 first on top, use x2 first down bottom. Also, your slopes will be rise over run. And we will use that relationship when we're talking about graphing. So your variables of x1, y1, and x2, y2 would just be any points that are on that line. So any two points on the line will give you your slope if you calculate with them correctly. All right, so if we want to find the slope, uh, let's say they give us two points, negative two, negative four, and three, negative five. First thing we want to do is establish which one we call them point one, which one we call them point two. So I decided to call point one x1, y1, uh, negative two, negative four, and then x1, y2, uh, x2, y2, excuse me. Three negative five. 
All right, so I'm going to calculate the slope both ways. Remember, I told you you could do x y2, y1, x2, x1, or y1, y2, x1, x2. Do both of them just to show you that uh, either way you'll get the same answer. Um, but remember, whenever you're doing your calculation, all you have to do is one. So let's do y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So y2 is 3, y1 is negative 4. So make sure you don't lose a negative. There's a minus sign in your formula, which is this minus sign, and then you're plugging in negative 4. Then you'll do x2. Oh, did I throw my x's in? Oh, that was my fault. I put an x. And that should be negative 5. Sorry about that. That's y2 minus, I did do y1, but I, that's why I put in x2. So it should be negative 5 minus negative 4. And then x2 is 3. And x1 is negative 2. All right. Negative 2 and negative. In both cases, we have that. So don't forget that turns positive. So that's negative 5 plus 4. 3 plus 2, so that'll be a negative 1 over 5 as your slope. Don't have to convert it to a decimal or anything. Just leave it as is, but you do have to simplify if it is possible. Then if we decide to do it to do it the other way, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Y1 is negative 4 minus y2, which is negative 5. Then x1 is negative 2 minus x2, which is 3. Go ahead and simplify negative 1 plus 5 now, which is positive 1. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, so it'll be a negative 1 fifth. So either way, you'll get negative one-fifth. Once again, you just have to be consistent with how you're plugging in. If you use Y2 first on top, then make sure you use X2 first down bottom. Or if you use Y1 first up top, then use X1 first down bottom. Questions? Any questions? All right, do one more just to make sure we're good. We have 5 and negative 6 as 0.1, 8 and 3 as 0.2. So we plug them in. Y2 is 3. Y1 is negative 6. X2 is 8, x1 is 5. That would be 3 plus 6. That negative 2, negative once again turns positive. 9, 8 minus 5 is 3. So your slope in this case would be 3. All right, your basic behaviors of your slope. If uh, your line is going up as you go from left to right, in other words, it's increasing, 
Then that means your slope is positive. If it's going down from left to right, your slope is decreasing. Or your line is decreasing, points are decreasing, that means your slope is negative. If you have a horizontal line, your slope is zero. If you have a vertical line, your slope is undefined. All right, so here we go. Graphing using your slopes. So as mentioned before, your slope is equal to rise over run. Rise is going to mean up or down. Your run is going to mean right or left. So your slope is actually going to be instructions for you to move up or down, right or left. So you're going to have positive moves. Your positive moves will be up and right. Your negative moves down and left. So if I have a positive three or a positive four, that means I'm going to go up three and right four. So those are two positive moves. Remember your decision to move up or down will be on your top number. To move right or left will be your bottom number. If I have negative five over positive seven, or if I just have negative five sevens, normally I say just give the negative to the top number. You can't give it to both because negative over negative will be positive. So it's either going to go uh, to the top or to the bottom. So if you decide to give it to the top, negative five over positive seven, that means I would have my point in the middle. Let's say point in the middle. Let's say if my point is right here, I would go down five and then right seven. Now I could get the negative to the bottom. It's up to you. Uh, that means I have a positive five over a negative seven. In that case, I would go up five and then left seven. Either way, I would still get the same line generated. Um, so it's up to you, but you only give the negative to one, to either the top or the bottom. You do not give that negative to both. All right, questions before we go to the next piece of this. All right, so before we actually use it to graph, we have to recognize our slope-intercept form. That's y equal to mx plus b. So whenever your equation is solved for y, it's in slope-intercept form. So if y is by itself, that means your equation is in slope-intercept form, where your slope is m, and then b is your y-intercept. All right. So if I had the equation y equal to 2 thirds x plus 1, what's in front of x is my slope. So remember, so a lot of times people make a mistake and they ask you what is the slope, they will write 2 thirds x. No, uh, that's incorrect. Remember the slope never had a variable attached to it, it was just a number. So whatever's in front of x, the m is your slope. So keep that in mind. Please don't make that mistake. Your slope here would not be 2 thirds x. It would just be 2 thirds. And then your y intercept would be 1. All 
And here I just did another example. If uh, we have y equal to negative 8 over 13x minus 5, then your slope is negative 8 over 13, and then uh, your y-intercept at b is negative 5. questions before we use this information to graph. All right. So use your slope to graph. First, you'll plot the y-intercept. Then you're going to generate another point from the y-intercept with the slope. So where a lot of people make a mistake here is that they go to the origin with the slope and go up right or go up to right three or whatever the case may be. But you don't do that. Your slope is not a point. You only go to the origin when you have a point. Um, you go if you have the slope, you're going to go back to your y-intercept or go to your y-intercept and then generate a point from the y-intercept. Okay. So let's go back to y equal to 2 thirds x. Um, we can do minus 1. I took my whole line. That'll be all right. So your slope is 2 thirds. That's a positive 2 over a positive 3. So that means I will go up to right 3. And your y-intercept is negative 1. But don't forget, the characteristic of all y-intercepts is that x is equal to 0. So my y-intercept would actually be 0, negative 1 as a coordinate. All right. Characteristic of all y-intercepts is that x is equal to 0. So your order pair is 0, negative 1. So now we can go ahead and graph. We graph your y-intercept first, and that's what we have here. Uh, we got to take off my eraser. All right, here we go. So that's what we have here, 0, negative 1. We don't go anywhere for x, but we move down 1. Then from your y-intercept, we go up 2, and then right 3. And that's your line. Questions, any questions? All right. So here we have y equal to negative one fourth x plus three. Your slope is negative one fourth. That's what's in front of x. Your y-intercept is three. All right. So if it's negative one over four, that means you go down one right four. And if your y-intercept is 3, that means the ordered pair is 0, 3. And once again, emphasizing the fact that as an ordered pair, your y-intercept will have 0. It's understood that you have 0 for x. All right, grab your y-intercept first. Go up 3. It's right here. Then from your y-intercept, you go down 1, and then right 4. And that's your line. All right, questions. Any questions?
All right, so that is it for 10.2. All right, so uh, we don't necessarily jump into what's on the six minutes in the way. We don't necessarily have to go into uh, 10.3. Um, questions on anything before we uh, close out today? Yep, go ahead, Miss Hill. So when I was doing 10.1 homework, mm -hmm. um, Questions three and four, I got confused. Like, I just don't know where I'm going wrong at. So the um, problem was graph the order pair solution of y equals x squared when x equals negative three, negative two, zero, two, and three. All right, hold on one sec. Let me get there. All right, say that to me one more time. Uh, graph the order pair solutions. Mm -hmm. of y equals x squared when x is equal to negative 3, negative 2, 0, 2, and 3. Okay. Two, one, two, three. Oh, okay. All right, all right, I got you. So um, now did you create the xy chart and set it up this way? Well, I mean, you don't necessarily have to write a chart, but um, – looking at it like this, and then you're gonna plug in your X values to find the corresponding Y value. So did you do it that way? Yeah. Okay, so now let me ask you this. When you went, to, so you got your points, so you should have had nine, four, what, nine, four, zero, four, nine, right? Um, when you plug them in, because you, Yes. You plug them in, and you get a uh, four, and then plug in zero, zero squared, zero. Now, when you tried to graph it, did you graph the points, or did you try to graph the parabola? Both. Okay. No. So I, I think because I think this problem wants this. So that's what I was saying. Did you try to do this? I did it both ways, but I can try like to that part and then I'll submit it and see. Yeah. Oh, what you can do is um send if I'm not mistaken, I think it wants this these points. Send me a screenshot. Um once you submit it, send me a screenshot. So it I can worked. see. Oh, it did work? Yeah. I okay. thought I tried okay. it. I probably did. But yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah, no problem. I think with that one, a lot of times people try to grab the actual parabola. But it really just wanted the points. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. All right. Anybody else before we close out? All right. So, um, you know, make sure we're knocking out these assignments. Um, take advantage of the, 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 the take home test. I mean, you know, I'm not sure anybody else is doing it this way. But, um, you know, take advantage of it. Don't forget that once you take your test, once you submit it, to shoot me your scrap. And um, we'll go from there. Anything else before we close out? Everybody good? All right, Ms. Hill? Last question. Did you want to, um, us to do the, uh, what is it? I think it was uh, test two. That was after nine. The Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Once I post it, uh, you have free reign to go ahead and knock that out. Um, so yeah, since we're out of chapter nine, you know, as soon as possible, go ahead and knock that out as well. Yep. Okay. All right. All right, guys. If everybody's good, I'm good. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Appreciate you guys showing up. Um, um have a good day. <laughs>